In Unit 2, you were introduced to the fundamentals of financial concepts and principles. You are now able to identify the systems, structure, roles, and impact of finance in the business environment. In Unit 3, you will delve deeper into using financial statements and ratio calculations to determine the health and future financial needs of the business organization. At the end of Unit 3, you will be able to describe the components of key financial statements and how these statements are used in making business decisions. You will be able to calculate financial ratios to determine the economic health of an organization. Lastly, you will be able to explain how financial forecasting helps the organization predict future financial needs. Note, Unit 3 may also be referred to as Financial Forecasting and Ratio Analysis within your assessment and coaching reports. Defining the financial statement financial statements report on a company's income, cash flow, and equity. Key points financial statements are formally prepared documents communicating an entity's financial activities to parties, including investors, management, and tax officials. An entity's financial statement typically includes four basic components, a balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, and statement of changes in equity. The balance sheet reports a point-in-time snapshot of the assets, liabilities, and equity of the entity. An income statement reports on a company's expenses and profits to show whether the company made or lost money. The cash flow statement reports the flow of cash in and out of the business, dividing cash into operating, investing, and financing activities. A statement of changes in equity explains the changes of the company's equity throughout the reporting period, including profits or losses, dividends paid and issue or redemption of stock. Key Terms Expenses The cost of assets consumed or services used in the process of earning revenue. They are incurred for the purpose of earning revenue. Liabilities An obligation of an entity arising from past transactions or events, including any type of borrowing. Equity. The residual claim or interest to investors in assets after all liabilities are paid. If liabilities exceed assets, negative equity exists and can be purchased through stock. Assets. Economic resources owned or controlled by a company that are capable of producing future benefits. Financial statement. A financial statement is a formal report of the financial activities of a business, person, or other entity. Financial statements are a key component of accounting, the process of communicating information about a financial entity. Financial statements are presented in a structured manner with conventions accepted by accounting and regulatory personnel. An entity's financial statement typically includes four basic components, a balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, and statement of changes in equity. The company's balance sheet reports on a company's assets, liabilities, and ownership equity. A balance sheet is often described as a snapshot of a company's financial condition at a single point in time. Balance sheets are usually presented with assets in one section and liabilities and net worth in the other. An income statement reports on a company's expenses and profits to show whether the company made or lost money. It also displays the revenues of a specific period and the cost and expenses charged against these revenues. In contrast with the balance sheet, which represents a single moment in time, the income statement represents a period of time. A cash flow statement shows how changes in income affect cash and cash equivalents, breaking the analysis down to operating, investing, and financing. Essentially, the cash flow statement is concerned with the flow of cash in and out of the business. As an analytical tool, a cash flow statement is useful in determining the short-term viability of a company. A statement of changes in equity explains the company's equity throughout the reporting period. The statement breaks down changes in the owner's interest in the organization and in the application of retained profit or surplus from one accounting period to the next. Line items typically include profits or losses, dividends paid, redemption of stock, and any other items credited to retained earnings. For complex entities, financial statements often include an extensive set of notes as an explanation of financial policies. The notes typically describe each item in detail. For example, 
The notes may explain financial figures or the accounting methods used to prepare the statement. Defining financial statements Financial statements are used to understand key facts about the performance and disposition of a business and may influence decisions. Key points owners and managers use financial statements to make important long-term business decisions. For example, whether or not to continue or discontinue part of its business, to make or purchase certain materials, or to acquire or rent slash lease certain equipment in the production of its goods. Prospective investors use financial statements to perform financial analysis, which is a key component in making investment decisions. A lending institution will examine the financial health of a person or organization and use the financial statement to decide whether or not to lend funds. Key Terms Financial Analysis Financial analysis, also referred to as financial statement analysis, refers to an assessment of the viability, stability, and profitability of an organization or project. Financial statements are used for a multitude of different purposes. Readers of a financial statement are seeking to understand key facts about the performance and disposition of a business. They make decisions about the business based on their reading of the statements. Because financial statements are widely relied upon, they must be straightforward to read and understand. For large corporations, these statements are often complex and may include an extensive set of notes to the financial statements and explanation of financial policies and management discussion and analysis. The notes typically describe each item on the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement in further detail. Notes to financial statements are considered an integral part of the financial statements. Owners and managers frequently use financial statements to make important business decisions, for example, whether or not to continue or discontinue part of the business, whether to make or to purchase certain materials, whether to acquire or to rent slash lease certain equipment in the production of goods. The documents are also helpful in making long-term decisions and as a source of historical records. Budget. One of the uses of financial statements is as a budgeting tool, as in this example. Prospective investors use financial statements to perform financial analysis, which is a key component in making investment decisions. A lending institution will examine the financial health of a person or organization and use the financial statement to decide whether or not to lend funds. Philanthropies may use financial statements of a nonprofit as a component in determining where to donate funds. Government entities, tax authorities, need financial statements to ascertain the propriety and accuracy of taxes and other duties declared and paid by a company. Vendors who extend credit may use financial statements to assess the creditworthiness of the business. Employees also may use reports in making collective bargaining agreements. Defining the income statement, the income statement, or profit and loss statement, P and L, reports a company's revenue, expenses, and net income over a period of time. Key points, the income statement consists of revenues and expenses along with the resulting net income or loss over a period of time due to earning activities. The income statement shows investors and management if the firm made money during the period reported. The operating section of an income statement includes revenue and expenses. Revenue consists of cash inflows or other enhancements of assets of an entity, and expenses consist of cash outflows or other using up of assets or incurring of liabilities. The non-operating section includes revenues and gains from non-primary business activities, items that are either unusual or infrequent, finance costs like interest expense, and income tax expense. The bottom line of an income statement is the net income that is calculated after subtracting the expenses from revenue. It is important to investors, also on a per-share basis, as earnings per share EPS, as it represents the profit for the accounting period attributable to the shareholders. Key Terms Income Statement A calculation which shows the profit or loss of an accounting unit during a specific period of time, providing a summary of how the profit or loss is calculated from gross revenue and expenses. Gross Profit The difference between net sales and the cost of goods sold. Net Income Gross profit minus operating expenses and taxes. Net earnings and net profit are also known as net income. Income bond. 
a dead instrument where coupon payments are only made if the issuer can afford it. Statement of Cash Flows A financial document that shows how changes in balance sheet accounts and income affect cash and cash equivalents, and breaks the analysis down to operating, investing, and financing activities. The Income Statement the income statement is a financial statement that is used to help determine the past financial performance of the enterprise, predict future performance, and assess the capability of generating future cash flows. It is also known as the profit and loss statement, P and L, statement of operations, or statement of earnings. A sample income statement. Expenses are listed on a company's income statement. Income statement. The income statement consists of revenues, money received from the sale of products and services before expenses are taken out, also known as the top line, and expenses, along with the resulting net income or loss over a period of time due to earning activities. Net income, the bottom line, is the result after all revenues and expenses have been accounted for. The income statement reflects a company's performance over a period of time. This is in contrast to the balance sheet, which represents a single moment in time. Methods for constructing the income statement. The income statement can be prepared in one of two methods, single or multi-step. The single step income statement totals revenues, then subtracts all expenses to find the bottom line. The more complex multi-step income statement, as the name implies, takes several steps to find the bottom line. First, operating expenses are subtracted from gross profit. This yields income from operations. Then other revenues are added and other expenses are subtracted. This yields income before taxes. The final step is to deduct taxes, which finally produces the net income for the period measured. Operating revenues and expenses, the operating section, includes revenue and expenses. Revenue consists of cash inflows or other enhancements of the assets of an entity. It is often referred to as gross revenue or sales revenue. Expenses consist of cash outflows or other using up of assets or incurrence of liabilities. Elements of expenses include cost of goods sold, COGS, the direct costs attributable to goods produced and sold by a business. It includes items such as material costs and direct labor. Selling, general and administrative expenses, SG and A. Combined payroll costs, except for what has been included as direct labor, depreciation and amortization. Charges with respect to fixed assets, depreciation, and intangible assets, amortization, that have been capitalized on the balance sheet for a specific accounting period. Research and development, R&D. Expenses included in research and development of products, Non-operating revenues and expenses, the non-operating section, includes revenues and gains from non-primary business activities, such as rent or patent income, expenses or losses not related to primary business operations, such as foreign exchange losses, gains that are either unusual or infrequent, but not both, finance costs, costs of borrowing, such as interest expense, and income tax expense, in essence, if an activity is not a part of making or selling the products or services, but still affects the income of the business, it is a non-operating revenue or expense. Reading the income statement, certain items must be disclosed separately in the notes if it is material, significant. This could include items such as restructurings, discontinued operations, and disposals of investments, or of property, plant, and equipment. Irregular items are reported separately so that users can better predict future cash flows. The bottom line of an income statement, often literally the last line of the statement, is the net income that is calculated after subtracting the expenses from revenue. It is important to investors as it represents the profit for the year attributable to the shareholders. For companies with shareholders, earnings per share EPS, are also an important metric and are required to be disclosed on the income statement. Defining GAAP gaps assumptions, principles, and constraints can affect income statements through temporary, timing, and permanent differences. 
Key points items that create temporary differences due to the recording requirements of GAAP include rent or other revenue collected in advance, estimated expenses, and deferred tax liabilities and assets. Also, there are events, usually one-time events, which create permanent differences, such as GAAP recognizing as an expense an item that the IRS will not allow to be deducted. The four basic principles of GAAP and effect items on the income statement. These principles include the historical cost principle, revenue recognition principle, matching principle, and full disclosure principle. Key terms deferred of or pertaining to a value that is not realized until a future date, egg, annuities, charges, taxes, income, either as an asset or liability, fair market value, an estimate of the market value of a property, based on what a knowledgeable, willing, and unpressured buyer would probably pay to a knowledgeable, willing, and unpressured seller in the market. An estimate of fair market value may be founded either on precedent or extrapolation, but is subjective. Fair market value differs from other ways of determining value, such as intrinsic and imposed value. Matching principle. According to the principle, expenses are recognized when obligations are 1. Incurred, usually when goods are transferred or services rendered, eggs sold, and 2. Offset against recognized revenues, which were generated from those expenses, no matter when cash is paid out. In cash accounting, in contrast, expenses are recognized when cash is paid out. Principles of GAAP Although most of the information on a company's income tax return comes from the income statement, there often is a difference between pre-tax income and taxable income. These differences are due to the recording requirements of GAAP for financial accounting, usually following the matching principle and allowing for accruals of revenue and expenses, and the requirements of the IRS tax regulations for tax accounting, which are more oriented to cash. Such timing differences between financial accounting and tax accounting create temporary differences. For example, rent or other revenue collected in advance, estimated expenses, and deferred tax liabilities and assets may create timing differences. Also, there are events, usually one time, which create permanent differences, such as GAAP, which recognizes as an expense an item that the IRS will not allow to be deducted. To achieve basic objectives and implement fundamental qualities, GAAP has four basic principles. The historical cost principle. It requires companies to account and report based on acquisition costs rather than fair market value for most assets and liabilities. The revenue recognition principle. It requires companies to record when revenue is 1 realized or realizable, and two, earned, not when cash is received. The matching principle. This governs the matching of expenses and revenues, where expenses are recognized, not when the work is performed or when a product is produced, but when the work or the product actually makes its contribution to revenue. The full disclosure principle. This suggests that the amount and kinds of information disclosed should be decided based on a trade-off analysis, since a larger amount of information costs more to prepare and use. Gap reporting also suggests that income statements should present financial figures that are objective, material, consistent, and conservative. Defining non-cash items, non-cash items, such as depreciation and amortization, will affect differences between the income statement and cash flow statement. Key points non-cash items should be added back in when analyzing income statements to determine cash flow because they do not contribute to the inflow or outflow of cash like other gains and expenses eventually do. Depreciation refers to the decrease in value of assets and the allocation of the cost of assets to periods in which the assets are used for tangible assets, such as machinery. Amortization is a similar process to deprecation when applied to intangible assets, such as patents and trademarks. Key Terms Depreciation The measurement of the decline in value of assets. Not to be confused with impairment, which is the measurement of the unplanned, extraordinary decline in value of assets. Amortization The distribution of the cost of an intangible asset, such as an intellectual property right, over the projected useful life of the asset. Obsolescence, 
the state of being obsolete, no longer in use, gone into disuse, disused or neglected. Non-cash items, non-cash items that are reported on an income statement will cause differences between the income statement and cash flow statement. Common non-cash items are related to the investing and financing of assets and liabilities and depreciation and amortization. When analyzing income statements to determine the true cash flow of a business, these items should be added back in because they do not contribute to inflow or outflow of cash like other gains and expenses. Fixed assets, also known as a non-current asset or as property, plant, and equipment, PP and E, is an accounting term for assets and property. Unlike current assets such as cash accounts receivable, PP and E are not very liquid. PP and E are often considered fixed assets. They are expected to have relatively long life and are not easily changed into another asset. These often receive a more favorable tax treatment than short-term assets in the form of depreciation allowances. Broadly speaking, depreciation is a way of accounting for the decreasing value of long-term assets over time. A machine bought in 2012, for example, will not be worth the same amount in 2022 because of things like wear and tear and obsolescence. On a more detailed level, depreciation refers to two very different but related concepts. The decrease in the value of tangible assets, fair value depreciation, and the allocation of the cost of tangible assets to periods in which they are used. Depreciation with the matching principle. The former affects values of businesses and entities. The latter affects net income. In each period, long-term non-cash assets accrue a depreciation expense that appears on the income statement. Depreciation expense does not require a current outlay of cash, but the cost of acquiring assets does. For example, an asset worth $100,000 in year, one may have a depreciation expense of $10,000. So it appears as an asset worth $90,000 in year two. Amortization is a similar process to deprecation, but is the term used when applied to intangible assets. Examples of intangible assets include copyrights, patents, and trademarks. Defining a balance sheet A balance sheet is a financial statement that summarizes a company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity at a specific point in time. Key points The main categories of assets are usually listed first, and normally, in order of liquidity. On a balance sheet, assets will typically be classified into current assets and non-current long-term assets. Current assets are those assets which can either be converted to cash or used to pay current liabilities within 12 months. Current assets include cash and cash equivalents, short-term investments, accounts receivable, inventories, and the portion of prepaid liabilities paid within a year. A non-current asset cannot easily be converted into cash. Non-current assets include property, plant and equipment, PPE, investment property, intangible assets, long-term financial assets, investments accounted for using the equity method, and biological assets. Key terms liquidity, availability of cash over short-term, ability to service short-term debt, the balance sheet, a standard company balance sheet, has three parts, assets, liabilities, and ownership equity. The main categories of assets are usually listed first and normally appear in order of liquidity. On the left side of a balance sheet, assets will typically be classified into current assets and non-current long-term assets. A balance sheet is a financial statement that summarizes a company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity at a specific point in time. These three balance sheet segments give investors an idea as to what the company owns and owes, as well as the amount invested by shareholders. Assets Assets on a balance sheet are classified into current assets and non-current assets. Assets are on the left side of a balance sheet. Current assets A current asset on the balance sheet is an asset which can either be converted to cash or used to pay current liabilities within 12 months. Typical current assets include cash and cash equivalents, short-term investments, accounts receivable, inventories, and the portion of prepaid liabilities which will be paid within a year. Cash and cash equivalents 
are the most liquid assets found within the asset portion of a company's balance sheet. Cash equivalents are assets that are readily convertible into cash, such as money market holdings, short-term government bonds or treasury bills, marketable securities and commercial papers. Cash equivalents are distinguished from other investments through their short-term existence. They mature within three months, whereas short-term investments are 12 months or less, and long-term investments are any investments that mature in excess of 12 months. Accounts receivable represents money owed by entities to the firm on the sale of products or services on credit. In most business entities, accounts receivable is typically executed by generating an invoice and either mailing or electronically delivering it to the customer, who, in turn, must pay it within an established time frame, called credit terms or payment terms. Most manufacturing organizations usually divide their inventory into raw materials, materials and components scheduled for use in making a product work in process, WIP, materials and components that have began their transformation to finished goods, finished goods, goods ready for sale to customers, goods for resale, returned goods that are saleable at deferred expense or prepayment, prepaid expense, plural often prepaids, is an asset representing cash paid out to a counterpart for goods or services to be received in a later accounting period. For example, if a service contract is paid quarterly in advance, at the end of the first month of the period two months remain as a deferred expense. In the deferred expense, the early payment is accompanied by a related, recognized expense in the subsequent accounting period, and the same amount is deducted from the prepayment. Non-current assets A non-current asset is a term used in accounting for assets and property, which cannot easily be converted into cash. This can be compared with current assets such as cash or bank accounts, which are described as liquid assets. Non-current assets include property, plant and equipment, PPE, investment property, such as real estate held for investment purposes, intangible assets, long-term financial assets, investments accounted for by using the equity method, and biological assets, which are living plants or animals. Property, plant, and equipment normally include items such as land and buildings, motor vehicles, furniture, office equipment, computers, fixtures and fittings, and plant and machinery. These often receive favorable tax treatment, depreciation allowance over short-term assets, Intangible assets are defined as identifiable, non-monetary assets that cannot be seen, touched, or physically measured. They are created through time and effort, and are identifiable as a separate asset. There are two primary forms of intangibles. Legal intangibles, such as trade secrets, e.g., customer lists or copyrights, patents and trademarks, and competitive intangibles, such as knowledge activities, egg know-how, knowledge, or collaboration activities, leverage activities, and structural activities. The intangible asset goodwill reflects the difference between the firm's net assets and its market value. This amount is first recorded at time of acquisition. The additional value of the firm in excess of its net assets usually reflects the company's reputation, talent pool, and other attributes that separate it from the competition. Goodwill must be tested for impairment on an annual basis and adjusted if the firm's market value has changed. Investments accounted for by using the equity method are 20 to 50% stake investments in other companies. The investor keeps such equities as an asset on the balance sheet. The investor's proportional share of the associate company's net income increases the investment, and a net loss decreases the investment, and proportional payment of dividends decreases it. In the investor's income statement, the proportional share of the investee's net income or net loss is reported as a single line item. Defining liabilities and equities, a liability is defined as an obligation of an entity arising from past transactions or events, the settlement of which may result in the transfer or use of assets, provision of services, or other yielding of economic benefits in the future. Equity is the value of an asset less the amount of all liabilities on that asset. It can be represented with the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity key points in financial accounting. 
A liability is defined as an obligation of an entity arising from past transactions or events, the settlement of which may result in the transfer or use of assets, provision of services, or other yielding of economic benefits in the future. Equity is the residual claim or interest of the most junior class of investors in assets after all liabilities are paid. The types of accounts and their description that comprise the owner's equity depend on the nature of the entity and may include common stock, preferred stock, capital surplus, retained earnings, treasury stock, stock options, and reserve. Key Terms Preferred Stock Stock with a dividend usually fixed, that is paid out of profits before any dividend can be paid on common stock. It also has priority to common stock in liquidation. Liability in financial accounting. A liability is defined by the following characteristics. Any type of borrowing from persons or banks for improving a business or personal income that is payable during short or long time, a duty or responsibility to others that entails settlement by future transfer or use of assets, provision of services, or other transaction yielding an economic benefit at a specified or determinable date, on occurrence of a specified event, or on demand a duty or responsibility that obligates the entity to another, leaving it little or no discretion to avoid settlement a transaction or event obligating the entity that has already occurred. The accounting equation relates assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. The accounting equation is the mathematical structure of the balance sheet. In accounting and finance, equity is the residual claim or interest of the most junior class of investors in assets after all liabilities are paid. If liability exceeds assets, negative equity exists. In an accounting context, shareholders' equity or stockholders' equity, shareholders' funds, shareholders' capital, or similar terms, represents the remaining interest in assets of a company spread among individual shareholders of common or preferred stock. At the start of a business, owners put some funding into the business to finance operations. This creates a liability on the business in the shape of capital, as the business is a separate entity from its owners. Businesses can be considered, for accounting purposes, sums of liabilities and assets. This is the accounting equation. After liabilities have been accounted for, the positive remainder is deemed the owner's interest in the business. In financial accounting, owner's equity consists of the net assets of an entity. Net assets is the difference between the total assets of the entity and all its liabilities. Equity appears on the balance sheet, one of the four primary financial statements. The assets of an entity includes both tangible and intangible items, such as brand names and reputation or goodwill. The types of accounts and their description that comprise the owner's equity depend on the nature of the entity and may include common stock, preferred stock, capital surplus, retained earnings, treasury stock, stock options, and reserve. The total changes to equity is calculated as follows. Equity, end of year balance, equals equity, beginning of year balance, plus slash changes to common or preferred stock and capital surplus plus slash net income slash loss, net profit slash loss earned during the period. Dividends. Dividends are typically cash distributions of earnings to stockholders on hand, and they are recorded as a reduction to the retained earnings account reported in the equity section. Defining working capital Working capital is a financial metric which represents operating liquidity available to a business, organization, and other entity. Key points Net working capital is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities. Current assets and current liabilities include three accounts which are of special importance. Accounts receivable, accounts payable, and inventories. The goal of working capital management is to ensure that the firm is able to continue its operations and that it has sufficient cash flow. The management of working capital involves managing inventories, accounts receivable and payable, and cash. Key Terms Operating Liquidity The ability of a company or individual to quickly convert assets to cash for the purpose of paying operating expenses. Deficit The amount by which spending exceeds revenue. Working Capital Working Capital abbreviated DODUC, 
is a financial metric which represents operating liquidity available to a business, organization, or other entity, including a governmental entity. Along with fixed assets, such as plant and equipment, working capital is considered a part of operating capital. Net working capital is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities. It is a derivation of working capital that is commonly used in valuation techniques such as discounted cash flows (DCFs). If current assets are less than current liabilities, an entity has a working capital deficiency, also called a working capital deficit. An increase in working capital indicates that the business has either increased current assets, that it has increased its receivables or other current assets, or has decreased current liabilities, for example, has paid off some short-term creditors. Current assets and current liabilities include three accounts which are of special importance. These accounts represent the areas of the business where managers have the most direct impact. Accounts receivable, current asset, inventories, current assets, and accounts payable, current liability. The current portion of debt, payable within 12 months, is critical because it represents a short-term claim to current assets and is often secured by long-term assets. Common types of short-term debt are bank loans and lines of credit. A company can be endowed with assets and profitability, but short of liquidity if its assets cannot readily be converted into cash. Decisions relating to working capital and short-term financing are referred to as working capital management. These involve managing the relationship between a firm's short-term assets and its short-term liabilities. The goal of working capital management is to ensure that the firm is able to continue its operations and that it has sufficient cash flow to satisfy both maturing short-term debt and upcoming operational expenses. The management of working capital involves managing inventories, accounts receivable, and payable, and cash. Inventory management is to identify the level of inventory, which allows for uninterrupted production but reduces the investment in raw materials and minimizes reordering costs, and hence increases cash flow. Debtors management involves identifying the appropriate credit policies, i.e. credit terms which will attract customers, such that any impact on cash flows and the cash conversion cycle will be offset by increased revenue and hence return on capital. Short-term financing requires identifying the appropriate source of financing, given the cash conversion cycle. The inventory is ideally financed by credit granted by the supplier. However, it may be necessary to utilize a bank loan or overdraft. Cash management involves identifying the cash balance which allows for the business to meet day-to-day -day expenses but reduces cash holding costs. Cash management involves identifying the cash balance which allows for the business to meet day-to-day -day expenses but reduces cash holding costs. Defining operating cash flow, the operating cash flows refers to all cash flows that have to do with the actual operations of the business, such as selling products. Key points operating cash flows refers to the cash a company generates from the revenues it brings in excluding costs associated with long-term investment on capital items or investment in securities. These are investing or financing activities. GAAP and IFRS vary in their categorization of many cash flows, such as paying dividends. Some activities that are operating cash flows under one system are financing or investing in another. Major operating activities such as manufacturing products or selling a product may appear on the income statement, but not on the cash flow statement, because cash has not yet changed hands. Key Terms IFRs International Financial Reporting Standards The major accounting standard system used outside of the United States. GAAP Generally accepted accounting principles refer to the standard framework of guidelines, conventions, and rules accountants are expected to follow in recording, summarizing, and preparing financial statements in any given jurisdiction. The operating cash flows component of the cash flow statement refers to all cash flows that have to do with the actual operations of the business. It refers to the amount of cash a company generates from the revenues it brings in, excluding costs associated with long-term investment on capital items or investment in securities. These are investing or financing activities.
Essentially, it is the difference between the cash generated from customers and the cash paid to suppliers. Cash flows from operating activities can be calculated and disclosed on the cash flow statement using the direct or indirect method. The direct method shows the cash inflows and outflows affecting all current asset and liability accounts, which largely make up most of the current operations of the entity. Those preparers that use the direct method must also provide operating cash flows under the indirect method. The indirect method is a reconciliation of the period's net income to arrive at cash flows from operations. Changes in current asset and liability accounts are added or subtracted from net income based on whether the change increased or decreased cash. The indirect method must be disclosed in the cash flow statement to comply with U.S. Accounting Standards, or GAF. U.S. GAF versus IFRS cash flow classification. Some transactions may be classified as different types of cash flows under GAAP and IFRS accounting standards. One major difference between GAAP and IFRS is how interest paid is categorized. Under GAAP, a loan payment would have to be broken down into two parts, the payment on principal financing and the payment of interest operating. Under IFRS, it is possible to categorize both as financing cash flows. All of the major operating cash flows, however, are classified the same way under JAP and IFRs. The most noticeable cash inflow is cash paid by customers. Cash from customers is not necessarily the same as revenue, though. For example, if a company makes all of its sales by extending credit to customers, it will have generated revenues but not cash flows from customers. It is only when the company collects cash from customers that it has a cash flow. Significant cash outflows are salaries paid to employees and purchases of supplies. Just as with sales, salaries, and the purchase of supplies may appear on the income statement before appearing on the cash flow statement. Operating cash flows, like financing and investing cash flows, are only accrued when cash actually changes hands, not when the deal is made. Defining cash flow investing cash flow from investing results from activities related to the purchase or sale of assets or investments made by the company. Key points assets included in investment activity include land, buildings, and equipment. Receiving dividends from another company's stock is an investing activity, although paying dividends on a company's own stock is not. An investing activity only appears on the cash flow statement if there is an immediate exchange of cash. Key terms investing activity. An activity that causes changes in non-current assets or involves a return on investment. Merger. The legal union of two or more corporations into a single entity, typically assets and liabilities being assumed by the buying party. Purchase return. Merchandise given back to the seller from the buyer after the sale and return for a refund. Investing activities. Actions where money is put into something with the expectation of gain, usually over a longer term. Cash flow statement One of the components of the cash flow statement is the cash flow from investing. An investing activity is anything that has to do with changes in non-current assets, including property and equipment, and investment of cash into shares of stock, foreign currency, or government bonds, and return on investment including dividends from investment in other entities and gains from sale of non-current assets. These activities are represented in the investing income part of the income statement. It is important to note that investing activity does not concern cash from outside investors, such as bondholders or shareholders. For example, a company may decide to pay out a dividend. A dividend is often thought of as a payment to those who invested in the company by buying its stock. However, this cash flow is not representative of an investing activity on the part of the company. The investing activity was undertaken by the shareholder. Therefore, paying out a dividend is a financing activity. Here are some examples of investment activity from the company's perspective. Cash outflow from the purchase of an asset, land, building, equipment, etc. Cash inflow from the sale of an asset cash outflow from the acquisition of another company cash inflow resulting from a merger cash inflow resulting from dividends paid on stock owned in another company. It is important to remember that, as with all cash flows, 
An investing activity only appears on the cash flow statement if there is an immediate exchange of cash. Therefore, extending credit to a customer, accounts receivable, is an investing activity, but it only appears on the cash flow statement when the customer pays off their debt. Defining cash flow from financing cash flows from financing activities arise from the borrowing, repaying, or raising of money. Key points financing activities can be seen in changes in non-current liabilities and in changes in equity in the change in equity statement. A positive financing cash flow could be really great for a company, such as if it just issued stock at a great price, or could be due to the company having to take out loans to stay out of bankruptcy. Issuing credit is not a financing activity though taking on credit is. Like all cash flows, such activities only appear on the cash flow statement when the exchange of money actually takes place. Key Terms Financing A transaction that provides funds for a business. Financing Activities Actions where money is flowing between the company and investors in the company, such as banks and shareholders. Financing Activities One of the three main components of the cash flow statement is cash flow from financing. In this context, Financing concerns the borrowing, repaying, or raising of money. This could be from the issuance of shares, buying back shares, paying dividends, or borrowing cash. Financing activities can be seen in changes in non-current liabilities and in changes in equity in the change in equity statement. On the liability side, a company may take out a loan. Everything concerning the loan is a financing activity. Receiving the money is a positive cash flow because cash is flowing into the company, while each individual payment is a negative cash flow. However, when a company makes a loan, by extending credit to a customer, for example, it is not partaking in a financing activity. Extending credit is an investing activity, so all cash flows related to that loan fall under cash flows from investing activities, not financing activities. As is the case with operating and investing activities, not all financing activities impact the cash flow statement, only those that involve the exchange of cash do. For example, a company may issue a discount, which is a financing expense. However, because no cash changes hands, the discount does not appear on the cash flow statement. Overall, positive cash flow could mean a company has just raised cash via a stock issuance or the company borrowed money to pay its obligations, therefore avoiding late payments or even bankruptcy. Regardless, the cash flow statement is an important part of analyzing a company's financial health, but is not the whole story. Defining overall cash flow having positive and large cash flow is a good sign for any business, though does not by itself mean the business will be successful. Key points, the three types of cash flow are cash from operations, investing, and financing. Having positive cash flows is important because it means that the company has at least some liquidity and may be solvent. A positive cash flow does not guarantee that the company can pay all of its bills, just as a negative cash flow does not mean that it will miss its payments. When preparing the statement of cash flows, analysts must focus on changes in account balances on the balance sheet. Cash flows from operating activities are essential to helping analysts assess the company's ability to meet ongoing funding requirements, contribute to long-term projects, and pay a dividend. Analysis of cash flow from investing activities focuses on ratios when assessing a company's ability to meet future expansion requirements. The free cash flow is useful when analysts want to see how much cash can be extracted from a company without causing issues to its day-to-day -day operations. Key terms free cash flow, net income plus depreciation and amortization, less changes in working capital, less capital expenditure, cash flow, the sum of cash revenues and expenditures over a period of time. What is a cash flow statement? In financial accounting, a cash flow statement, also known as statement of cash flows or funds flow statement is a financial statement that shows how changes in balance sheet accounts and income affect cash and cash equivalents. The cash flow statement, as the name suggests, provides a picture of how much cash is flowing in and out of the business during the fiscal year. The cash flow is widely believed to be the most important of the three financial statements 
because it is useful in determining whether a company will be able to pay its bills and make the necessary investments. A company may look great based on the balance sheet and income statement, but if it doesn't have enough cash to pay its suppliers, creditors, and employees, it will go out of business. A positive cash flow means that more cash is coming into the company than going out, and a negative cash flow means the opposite. Relationship to other financial statements when preparing the cash flow statement. One must analyze the balance sheet and income statement for the coinciding period. If the accrual basis of accounting is being utilized, accounts must be examined for their cash components. Analysts must focus on changes in account balances on the balance sheet. General rules for this process are as follows. Transactions that result in an increase in assets will always result in a decrease in cash flow. Transactions that result in a decrease in assets will always result in an increase in cash flow. Transactions that result in an increase in liabilities will always result in an increase in cash flow. Transactions that result in a decrease in liabilities will always result in a decrease in cash flow. Interpretation An analyst looking at the cash flow statement will first care about whether the company has a net positive cash flow. Having a positive cash flow is important because it means that the company has at least some liquidity and may be solvent. Whether the net cash flow is positive or negative, an analyst will want to know where the cash is coming from or going to. The three types of cash flows, operating, investing, and financing, will all be broken down into their various components and then summed. The company may have a positive cash flow from operations, but a negative cash flow from investing and financing. This sheds important insight into how the company is making or losing money. The analyst will continue breaking down the cash flow statement in this manner, diving deeper and deeper into the specific factors that affect the cash flow. For example, cash flows from operating activities provide feedback on a company's ability to generate income from internal sources. Thus, these cash flows are essential to helping analysts assess the company's ability to meet ongoing funding requirements, contribute to long-term projects, and pay a dividend. Analysis of cash flow from investing activities focuses on ratios when assessing a company's ability to meet future expansion requirements. One such ratio is that for capital acquisitions. Capital acquisitions ratio equals cash flow from operating activities slash cash paid for property, plant, and equipment. This sphere of cash flows also can be used to assess how much cash is available after meeting direct shareholder obligations and capital expenditures necessary to maintain existing capacity. Free cash flows free cash flow is a way of looking at a business's cash flow to see what is available for distribution among all the securities holders of a corporate entity. This may be useful when analysts want to see how much cash can be extracted from a company without causing issues to its day-to-day -day operations. The free cash flow can be calculated in a number of different ways depending on audience and what accounting information is available. A common definition is to take the earnings before interest and taxes, add any depreciation and amortization, then subtract any changes in working capital and capital expenditure. The free cash flow takes into account the consumption of capital goods and the increases required in working capital. For example, in a growing company with a 30-day collection period for receivables, a 30-day payment period for purchases, and a weekly payroll, it will require more and more working capital to finance its operations because of the time lag for receivables, even though the total profits have increased. Free cash flow measures the ease with which businesses can grow and pay dividends to shareholders. Even profitable businesses may have negative cash flows. Their requirement for increased financing will result in increased financing costs reducing future income.